All right, folks, let's get the show on the road. I'm doing yet again uh, another microphone experiment. Uh, this time, shotgun mic outside uh, on upper deck of my house. Uh, for now, my house, I may be moving, uh, remains to be seen. This should be my wrap up uh, for the Vortex Strike Eagle 5 25 by 56 rifle scope with the EBR 7. C radical, I believe. I've been looking at this guy for a little while in a variety of different lighting conditions, and I've had it in a couple different guns. Uh, I've got a good amount of ammo behind this, well, through the gun with the scope on it, and I'm pretty much ready uh, to offer my conclusions. Um, I just did kind of the last uh, round of looking through it in this case. Uh, where I am right now, it's right around sunset, as the sun is setting and it's loads, you know, good time to look at the flare. And I did two things with this scope. Well, one was just to use it, shoot it, check tracking, all that sort of stuff. And another was to compare it against other scopes, but rather than go and try to find as many as possible that are in the same basic price range, I did something different instead. I tried to uh, guard banded. Okay. And that's pretty much what I'm going to be talking about most, how it compares. Um, what I have here is the Vortex Strike Eagle, the Swamp Fox Kentucky Long, Delta Striker, and Neopta Optica 6. So the way I'm going to structure this is uh, as follows. First, I'll give you some general background on the scope and where I used it and what I did with it uh, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, then I'll tell you a little bit about the competition. Uh, we'll look at the specs. We'll talk a little bit about features and mechanics and things like that. And after that, I'm going to uh, tell you how they differ in terms of uh, optics and image quality and stuff like that. And then, you know, general, uh, general purpose uh, wrap up. So a little bit about the scope. Historically, I've been sort of on the record that Vortex's Strike Eagle product line is really not my cup of tea. Um, they are very popular, they sell a ton of them, and I've never seen a Strike Eagle scope that agreed with me. Uh, I thought they had, you know, honestly, I thought they had some issues. Now, uh, this is the first Strike Eagle scope that I actually like. You know, but to be fair, it's the first precision oriented front focal plane Strike Eagle that they've made. So perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps there's something, uh, perhaps there's something to that. Like the rest of the scopes here, this one has a 56 millimeter objective, which has sort of become a de facto standard uh, for a larger, um, excuse me, for the larger end of precision rifle scopes. And honestly, to really have good experience with high magnification, all of these scopes top out at either 25, strike it with the rest of them at 530, you kind of need a larger objective lens. Under, you know, during the broad daylight, under some conditions, uh, you can get away with uh, a smaller objective. But by and large, Unless, uh, you know, this is going a fairly lightweight rifle and all that, there is very little downside. You see people walking, they're walking their dog, and there's a rabbit in the middle of the road. It's about to get fun. Come on, you can do this. The rabbit doesn't even bother. Okay, now it's away. The dog didn't pay any attention. But anyhow, so you pretty much need a larger objective lens for a good experience. Historically, in the past, there have been a lot of cases uh, where a manufacturer would go to a large objective lens, but they didn't design it well, and instead of, you would get a larger exit pupil, but you would uh, uh, compromise in other things in terms of distortion and stuff like that. Nowadays, even some of these comparatively inexpensive, it's still a lot of money, but comparatively inexpensive scopes handle large objectives well. So my in, in many ways, my interest with the Strike Eagle was to see how well they pull off a large objective. Are there any compromises related to that? And whether um, even these comparatively expensive scopes can really pull it off. And honestly, uh, honestly, they 
can. Now with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about features and mechanical performance. A Strike Eagle has locking turrets. There's a little collar that goes up and down. Uh, zero stop, both turrets lock. It comes with a cat tail, and I'm going to make some because it's pretty smooth. So I'm not because I need a cat tail, but I tried it. It's nice and quick, but yeah, it seems to work okay. Uh, side focus parallax that goes down to I believe 15 yards, I think. Yes, around 15 yards, and illuminated uh, EBR7 reticle. One of the things that Strike Eagle does uh, very cleverly is that uh, they use the same basic reticle across different. Uh, uh, price range scopes and that makes it a really interesting option you can have for example one of the high-end razors on your competition gun and a PST that's all smaller on your gas gun and strike eagle with you know compared to a close focus on your rim fire and have the same reticle everywhere and being used to the same reticle is a really big deal so in that regard I think uh, uh, Vortex is doing something very clever and they're doing it uh, the right way. In my attempt uh, to guard bend the scope, I chose one that's a little bit less expensive. That's a Swamp Fox Kentucky Long, 5 to 30 by 56. This is the only one here with a 30 millimeter tube. The other ones are 34. Um, this one is a MOA scope. They do my Camille version. Also uh, locking turrets. In this case, the whole turret comes up here. There's like a only the outer part of the turret comes up and down. Side focus, also down to 15 yards, also illuminated radical. A little bit more expensive than the Strike Eagle. The Strike Eagle is about 700. Uh, Kentucky Long is uh, about 600 or less, I think. Uh, Optica 6, one around 950, so that's a step up. And then there is the Striker HD that doesn't, you know, it's a more expensive school, but since I had it, I figured I'll put it in and it's about 1700 bucks. And there is a reason for it. So the rest of these are uh, 30 millimeter. Um, the striker does not have locking turrets. They're both exposed. The Optica 6 has a locking elevation turret, but no locking windage turret for God knows what reason. It's one of my complaints, comparatively few complaints, with the uh, with the Optica 6. As far as the rest of the mechanical features go, there is all the usual stuff. These scopes are configured extremely similar. They all have the fast focus eyepiece, all have side focus for image. And other than difference in locking versus non-locking turrets, they're all set up in the same nowadays comparatively uh, conventional uh, way. I will, so I switched uh, from um, a column, a extendable column tripods to this uh, field optics research tripod that has a bolt top. It's quite a bit steadier and I like it a lot. I use it for shooting and I use it to, as a support when I test scopes. But uh, with that, it's hard for me to tilt it as much as I have a bracket for it, but I forgot it somewhere. So I'm just going to tilt and I'll show you overall the dimensions of the scopes. All right, once again, uh, Strike Eagle, Kentucky Long, Striker. Optica 6. They're all broadly the same size, the striker being slightly uh, shorter than the other ones here. Okay. In terms of mechanical performance, I like the Strike Eagle a fair bit. There isn't really anything to complain about per se. I doubt you can hear it. So the turret feel is the clicks are distinct. But they are not the best. There is a sort of like clicky feel. They are louder, but less, less of a thud when you switch clicks. Let me see if you can hear this enough. Aside from that, I didn't really have any any major uh, issues in the very beginning when I just started uh, testing the Strike Eagle. I put it on my uh, Tika T1X uh, Rimfire. And after shooting it a little bit, I decided to do a basic vertical tracking test. Uh, I will admit I don't spend a ton of time uh, testing the tracking on uh, with the check. I have to check it to make sure everything is okay, but I don't spend a whole lot of time with it unless something is obviously wrong. I do work out the elevation adjustments. Excuse me. 
Atlas and Chain My Nose. I do uh, work out the elevation adjustments uh, quite carefully. And um, in the beginning of my time with the Striker Glue, there was a quirk. And uh, um, you should see a, a letter picture and post. So you should see it on the screen now. Uh, what happens is that I do this very quick and crude test. I don't work very hard on it. I basically take a shot, go up in the radian, take a shot, go up in the radian, take a shot for I don't know, about 10 milliradians or thereabouts. Usually about one, roughly one revolution of the turret, which is 10 milliradians in this case. And uh, uh, taking one shot at each step. Then I go back down one milliradian each step, taking one shot at each step. And I go up and down like this a couple of times. It's not a definitive test of any sort, but if there are any obvious issues, it will tell me because uh, you're checking going up, you're checking going down, and because you're shooting after every adjustment, if there is some unusual settling or something like that, you will see things. I am not uh, trying to go for the tightest group. I'm doing this test fairly quickly. This takes a long time. It's a fair number of rounds. But A, I need the practice, and B, I am looking for gross issues. And with a strike eagle, I did find one. Although, you know, before you uh, turn off the video and discount the scope, it went away, and I'll explain why. Where um, at about, I think uh, it was two milliradian above uh, zero, when I went up to milliradian, the group shifted to the side and then recovered uh, and stayed that way. Uh, the way uh, scopes are built, uh, there is a pressure pad from the uh, windage turret that presses on the erector from the side, and then the elevation turret moves the uh, erector tube up and down. And uh, if there is some sort of a burr, some uniformity on this pressure pad from the windage turret, that's when, when you adjust elevation, you can have something go up, uh, go to the side, and then come back when you're past that irregularity. Uh, it was a little bit uh, troubling, but then I basically did a uh, uh, Cyclops Joe uh, scope test. Joe, in case you're watching this one, is for you. I basically twisted this thing. I don't remember the uh, uh, phrase that Joe uses. Something to do with tits, nipples, and his weird hobbies. But anyhow, um, after working through the turrets a fair bit, that particular issue went away. So there was some sort of non-uniformity there, and it wore in. Honestly, I've seen this kind of stuff before. It's usually not a very big deal, but in the interest of full disclosure, on this specific scope, it did happen. And just a, it's, it's just a manufacturing issue of some sort. Uh, and it broke in, and I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't see it again in any way, shape, or form. Aside from that, I did not encounter any uh, mechanical issues with the scope. Illumination works. Uh, wind, wind engine uh, elevation adjusted correctly. Uh, eyepiece once focused, uh, stayed focused. Sometimes they actually drift, but uh, this one didn't give me any issues. I did not see any obvious problems uh, with uh, um, uh, with point of aim change when you just parallax. It's another you know, compared to the common issue. So overall, mechanically, other than that early quirk, the scope behaved well. It's getting darker, so I think I need to change the F number. And I don't know if you can hear this. The neighborhood kids are going nuts. Uh, what was that? Yeah. So mechanically, it's been good. Now, how does it compare in terms of mechanical feel to other uh, scopes here? Well, it is a step up from the Kentucky Long. Kentucky Long is a competent scope, but you know the feel is less distinct. There's a little bit more slop in the turrets than on the Strike Eagle. You know, in this case, you kind of know what you're paying for. Mechanically, the Strike Eagle is a more polished scope, but you know, it is also a little bit more expensive. Compared to the Optical 6, which is more expensive than the Strike Eagle, it was kind of interesting. I prefer the feel of the turrets on the Optical 6. They're less loud, but more distinct in terms of feel. It's easier for me to run uh, the Optical 6 blind. But I really like the locking turret of the, uh, 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 of the Strike Eagle. And uh, although the Optical 6 windage turret has very nice clicks, it doesn't do anything for me because I never really use it. I would have much preferred a simpler uh, locking turret. Strike Eagle, so most light optics work scopes do not have uh, uh, the best adjustments. 
but um, it works well for me. It's very predictable. I never miss the click. And what other things I like on the Strike Eagle is that the vintage turret is much lower profile. I wish it was locking or covered, but as is because it sticks out a lot less. I have not had any issues uh, with twisting it. But in terms of click feel, both Optica 6 and the Striker are better than the Strike Eagle. As it should be. That's one of the things you're paying for when you're spending uh, when you're spending more money. Looking at the uh, specs, the few interesting things uh, stand out. One is that in many ways all of these scopes are quite similar. In terms of uh, optical specifications, one of the things that jumps out nearly immediately is that the Strike Eagle has easily the widest uh, field of view uh, of the bunch. I also included the Vortex Razor in the uh, in the specification table, so you can see the high end vortex and the strike eagle is a wider uh, field of view and wider parent field of view. And you'll see, I took snapshots through uh, all four scopes using exactly the same field of view of the cell phone, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep the cropping the same. So you'll see that the image circle is larger on the strike eagle. It is it is significantly larger, which is kind of a nice thing. Now, what was I? Uh, yeah. Field of view, this guy is just exemplary. It's very, very nice. Um, it works well and all that. It's aside from that, in terms of size, weight, length, dimensions, there's really not all that much uh, to differentiate these scopes. They're kind of all made in terms of the same um, mold in terms of uh, in terms of size and weight. Um, the Kentucky Long is MOA clicks. Outside of that, all of these are 0.1 mm radian clicks. 10 mm radian per turn with broadly similar adjustment range. Kentucky Long with the 30 mm tip has a little bit less adjustment range, but once again, it is the cheapest uh, scope of the um, of the bunch. Uh, keep in mind that the uh, field view spec on a Swamp Fox website for Kentucky Long is not accurate. I measured it, and what you see in the spec table is uh, what you see in the spec table is correct. Optically, the performance is kind of interesting. I mean, it broadly scales with price. Uh, Strike Eagle, in terms of pure optical performance, gets dangerously close to Optica 6. Uh, but Optica 6 is still better. Uh, I live not too far from an area from an Air Force base, so there's also always uh, uh, something flying around. All right, so let's go up that picture a little bit. Okay. Where was I? Uh, it's optical performance. Between Kentucky Long and the Strike Beagle, in terms of resolution, it's actually not that big a difference. Uh, very, very close. Kentucky Long really acquits itself well. But where Strike Eagle is better is in terms of contrast. The contrast and these tonal color variations uh, between these two scopes, Strike Eagle uh, edges it out. Now, uh, Strike Eagle is a 5 time erector, so it's a 5 to 25 scope. The rest of these are 6 time erector, 5 to 30, 4.5 to 30, but basically 5 to 30. So the optical systems are clearly different, but the contrast on the Strike Eagle is worked out quite nicely. Compared to the Optica 6, the contrast is roughly the same. However, Optica 6 does out-resolve the Strike Eagle by a little bit. And you can really see it. So one of the things I do um, uh, from my house, there are a bunch of, I look at pieces of building with shingles, and all those shingles provide me a lot of um, kind of a low contrast detail to look at. You can kind of see the contrast and uh, uh, resolution differences without any major issues. So the Optica 6 does uh, out-resolve uh, the Strike Eagle. Now the Delta, which is much more expensive, resolves better, has better contrast. But honestly, I mean, in Spot Strike and Optica 6 really do well. 
uh, for the money. Uh, the Delta Striker, I think, uh, in terms of tactical scopes and what you get for the money, I think fifteen seventeen hundred dollars is just about the sweet spot uh, for precision scopes. But it is a lot of money, and it is impressive how good of an image quality we are getting with less expensive scopes like the Strike Eagle and the uh, the Optica Six. In uh, low light, it roughly scales, so the, the ultimate resolution uh, plays a little bit less of a role once you go into low light uh, conditions. But what does make a big difference is the contrast. And uh, there, the difference between the Strike Eagle and the Optica 6 kind of equalized. They really performed very similarly in low light. The resolution advantage of Optica 6 did not seem to make that much of a difference, but good contrast to the Strike Eagle, Strike Eagle a nice wide field of view really helped. Wider field of view scopes generally do well in low light, and that seemed to uh, that seemed to really make a difference. In low light, Kentucky Long was a little bit uh, behind, more behind the Strike Eagle than during the day. Another kind of an interesting thing was the flare control. That's what I was just looking at earlier today, kind of the last thing that I wanted to look at. The flare control on the Strike Eagle is quite good. Easily equal to the Optica 6, maybe even a touch better, it's hard to say, but it's definitely close. Now, both of these benefit from a sunshade. I don't have a sunshade for the Strike Eagle, I don't have a factory sunshade for the Miopto, but I think the Ares ETR uh, sunshade fits it. Uh, with sun coming in, both of these exhibited some amount of veiling flare, and uh, the it was kind of asymmetric, a little bit more from the left and from the right, but both of them were broadly similar. I didn't see any really uh, major differences, and flare control is where, uh, with a more expensive striker, you clearly know what you're paying for. It was notably better. During the day, uh, flare doesn't matter as much, but you see some ramifications of it in how you see color fringing from CA. Flare plays a role in how well you uh, see these things. All of this, with all of these scopes, if I really try, I can induce some uh, chromatic aberration color fringing. And the amount of uh, chromatic aberration kind of scales with price, um, Delta being the best, then Miopta, then Vortex and then the Swamp Fox, but it was not excessive for any of them. The way uh, the chromatic aberration worked uh, with the Strike Eagle was that it was most of a lateral kind. If I was really lined up in a scope, it was really wasn't much of some purple, a little bit yellow. But if I started moving my eye around, once you get off center, it becomes more prominent. It's called lateral chromatic aberration. And that, um, once again, is not uncommon. Uh, the rest of the scopes do this also to the same degree, similar degree, not same. Similar degree, Kentucky Long is a little worse. Optica 6 is perhaps uh, a touch better. Okay. Uh, getting behind the scope. This was another uh, sort of a uh, interesting thing. Because what happened uh, is that the eye relief of the how are those kids doing? I wonder how it comes through in the video. The eye relief of the Strike Eagle and Kentucky Long is substantially shorter than that of the Delta and of the Neopter. Um, at least two thirds of an inch, or thereabouts, at least no high magnifications. And um, getting behind the scope is a little bit different, you know, depending on how close you are to the uh, eyepiece. It feels different. In terms of them, the Strike Eagle does have the largest eyepiece here, which is partially uh, responsible for the wider uh, field of view. In terms of the preferable eye box, how flexible the eye relief is, this was actually one of the things that was the Strike Eagle's weakness. The position, eye position behind the eyepiece is fairly critical, not ridiculously so, but it is critical. Uh, Kentucky Long was slightly more forgiving. Neopta and Delta were substantially more forgiving. 
this is one of those uh, things where this is what you, one of the things you are paying for. In terms of pure optical performance, I mean, it's amazing how good these lower uh, price scopes are. But when you're paying more money, one of the things you're paying for is how easy it is to get behind. Now, when you go to very high magnification, exit people get smaller with all scopes. You start running into you know, eye bug sensitivity issues. Uh, I really test this you know, cross magnification range, but what's really important for me is in the 15 to 16 power range. I spend a lot of time there, well, 12 to 15. In this case, I was looking at uh, uh, at 15 with these scopes. I kind of calibrated the magnification, looked carefully, and it was notable how uh, much easier it was to get behind the Delta and the Miopta. And even the less expensive Kentucky Long was slightly easier to get behind than the Strike Eagle. Now, I didn't, in actual shooting, Strike Eagle did not give me any trouble. I've tested it on a large frame AR and I tested it on a rim fire, and I was able to shoot from all normal field positions without any issues. But side by side with other scopes, this is one of the things where the Strike Eagle design is a little bit weaker. Okay. I'm not gonna, uh, moving on, I'm not going to talk about reticles too much. The EBR7 uh, C reticle in the Strike Eagle is fairly well explored. It's a well-designed reticle. I'm not a huge fan. I think the center is a little bit busier, but honestly, reticles are busier than I'd like. Honestly, uh, reticles are in the eye of the beholder. So this is not something that I really use in terms of uh, how I rank uh, a scope. And despite the fact that the BR7 is not my favorite reticle, it is a very, very usable reticle, and I do have a lot of mileage with it. So despite that fact, uh, the Strike Eagle is on my list of recommendations. As far um, as $700 scopes go, I mean, if I'm looking for a conclusion, as far as $700 <coughs> precision-oriented scopes go, this is probably about as good as you're going to get in the modern uh, uh, marketplace. It is a solid design. It works well. The weaknesses are far and few in between, mostly pertaining to slightly uh, tighter eye position and um, the third field not being quite as good as the uh, larger scopes. It is an exceptionally full feature design. It does well across the range of lighting conditions. And in terms of depth of field, I did not really see any issues. Oh, I forgot to talk about depth of field earlier, but fundamentally, if there was anything wrong, I'd bring it up. Uh, depth of field is quite good. I didn't have to putz around with a parallax all that much, but it does scale to a certain degree with price. This was another thing where all Miot and Delta were a little bit better. The where the strike angle is really strong is that it really maintained contrast well across a range of uh, uh, lighting conditions. After initial break-in, uh, had no mechanical issues, and it really has a very wide field of view. It's an easy scope to use. The a larger, wider field of view is uh, somewhat more relaxing to us. And even after prolonged use, the Strike Eagle did not give me any trouble. This is one of the sort of a litmus tests of how an optic behaves. Uh, spent time with it, looked through it for a good amount of time. And if you, it is not giving you excessive fatigue, then you probably got something good. The rest is uh, details. But anyhow, so that's roughly that. If uh, there's anything I missed or you want more details on anything, uh, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, you know where to find me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.